In this video, you're going to learn how to expand polynomials in factored form into their standard form using a Pascal's triangle. Consider the following polynomial function. It is in factored form. It has two factors, x plus 1 and x minus 5 cubed. This is a quartic function. It has four x-intercepts, three of which are repeating order three. We want to expand this polynomial function into its standard or expanded form. In order for us to do that, we first need to expand x minus five cubed. We could potentially just expand three brackets, but there is a faster way. So let's write this expression separately. x minus 5 cubed. In order for us to expand it, we can use Pascal's triangle. A Pascal's triangle starts with a 1 and then has 1s on the outside of each row. So then we continue with 1, 1, and then the middle value or values will be the sum of the two previous ones. And then we continue with 1, 1 on the outside, and then the, ne the next one here will be 3, and the next one here will also be 3. And then again, 1, and then again, 1 here, and then we're adding these together, 4, and then these two together, 6, and then these two together, 4. So where you see only 1, 1, it's row 0. This is when you just have a constant and x to the power of 0. When you have the second row in the triangle, this is really row 1, and it represents the exponent of the expression, the degree of the expression. And then the third row is row two, and then this one is row three, and this one is row four. So since in our case, the expression is cubed, it means we need to choose row three and the values in this row are the coefficients of the terms of this expression in the expanded form. Next, this is term 1, we're going to label it A, and this is term 2, negative 5. So term 1 is x, term 2 is negative 5. When we start expanding this uh, expression, we're going to start with the coefficient, that's the first number in row 3, then the first term to the highest exponent, in this case it's exponent 3, and times the second term to the lowest exponent, which is not 1, it's 0. It's a common mistake when people write 1 as the lowest. 0 is the lowest. Then, next term. You're always adding the terms, and then you will eliminate the double signs once you start simplifying. Okay, the next coefficient in our expression will be positive 3 times term 1 x to the power of 2 or squared and term 2 multiplied by all the previous parts of the term to the power of 1. And now you can see that the first term starts with the highest exponent and ascend or descends it decreases by one 
all the way to zero. And the second term starts at the lowest exponent and ascends, increases all the way to three. So let's continue. Plus next coefficient is positive three again. So three x to the power of one. We don't have to write it, but I want to emphasize it. When it's a power of one, it's just x, right? And then times negative five, and we're going up for this one squared. And the last coefficient is positive one. So plus one x to the power of zero and negative five cube. Excellent. We have set it all up. Now we need to simplify it. When we have a coefficient of one, we're not writing it. When we have a number raised to the power of zero, when you have a base other than zero raised to the power of zero, it could be a variable, it could be a number, it's equal to one. So negative five to the power of zero is equal to one and x to the power of zero is also equal to one. We have it further down the expression. So then the first term simplifies to just x cubed. Then for the second term here, we have two constants. We have three and we have negative five. We can multiply them together. The coefficient times the value of negative five and get negative 15 and now I'm replacing plus with a minus not to have double signs and then x squared. Next term. Here I need to keep in mind the order of operations. So I'm going to square the negative 5 first which gives me the same thing as negative five times negative five, which is positive 25, and then times three, times the coefficient. So it will be plus 75, and then x to the power of one, or just x. And the last term, we have a coefficient of one, we have negative five to the power of three, which is negative five times negative five times negative five. And then we also have x to the power of zero and x to the power of zero is equal to one. Negative five cubed is negative 125. So we're going to write it down as a constant. And we already have our expression in the most simplified expanded form, x cubed minus 15x squared plus 75x minus 125. It starts with the highest exponent and goes down to the lowest exponent of zero where there's just a constant, right? Now we need to continue with the rest of the function. We still have x plus one that we want to distribute Okay, so this is what our function looks like now. We have expanded one of the expressions, but we still have one other factor that we need to distribute over the rest, the remaining of the function, right? So now we're going to take term one and literally multiply it by every single term inside the second bracket. And then we're going to take term two and repeat the same thing. Remember that you still do have a negative one here that you are going to keep as is for now. So f of x is equal to negative. And now that negative will apply to every single term inside the new expression. So we're going to get x times x cubed is x to the power of four. When you're multiplying the powers with the same base, you keep the base, add the exponents. Negative 15 
x cubed plus 75 x squared and then minus 125 x. Now let's move on to positive 1. Positive 1 times x cubed is x cubed. Positive 1 times negative 15 x squared is just that, negative 15 x squared. And then plus 75 x and then subtract 125. Next, we're going to try and collect combine like terms. So we have negative 15 x cubed and positive x cubed. We have positive 75 x squared and negative 15 x squared. And we have negative 125 x and positive 75 x. So then f of x is equal to negative x to the power of 4 minus 14x cubed plus 60x squared minus 50x and then subtract 125. Now, we're going to distribute the negative 1. So every single term's sign changes to the opposite. Plus 50x plus 125. And there we go. We have a quartic function, right, with a negative leading coefficient. The y-intercept is determined by the constant in the expanded form, and it has the coordinates of 0, 125. Please like this video and visit intomath.org.